Hello and welcome back to Russ Plays Games. My name is Russ, and as you can see, I'm sitting in front of my painting station. I'm continuing today to talk about my um, my painting uh, uh, prowess and and um, and my paint station. And I was gonna kind of go over a little bit of some uh, some painting stuff. And uh, I need to. Uh, this this video is probably just going to be me kind of talking about how to prep a miniature and how to, you know, kind of get some things done. I'm going to finish up some of the tools that I have that I use. Um, and so, you know, this this one's going to kind of be for a little bit. And then once I kind of figure out how to how to mount a little camera and start filming, then I'll I'll get to the actual painting. Um, so <laughs> when I last left off... Um, I was talking about the paint brushes. Now, um, the one that I've been using the most lately um, is uh, this um, this brand. Um, this is a number one brush. Um, it's as you can see, it's a it's a kind of one of the the main brand. You know, if, like if you go to a Michaels and you go down their uh, their paint aisle. And um, you look at their um, their things. This is what I've been using mostly. Um, and then I, th I think this one's, yeah, this one's the good one. Um, and this one I've been using to kind of paint the most right now. Um, I have a couple of other brushes. I don't have them up here in front of me, but I have a couple of other brushes that I've used in the past. I'll show off some of them here in a second. Um, but what ends up happening invariably is you start using these and eventually the ends start to fray. Okay, and what do I mean by fray? Well, if we go to this size, which is typically the size that I like to use, um, this is a 10-0 uh, um, round brush, and, uh, and basically um, you can kind of see this is what I mean by fray. Okay, it loses its tip and it just goes everywhere and when you're trying to do fine detail work like faces and highlighting this doesn't always work okay so what ends up happening is these get relegated to um dry brushing duty okay because that's about all they're good for anymore um and i typically depending on how often i paint and how much i paint um these uh can go anywhere from you know, like five miniatures out to 20 miniatures before they start doing this. Um, and what ends up happening is, is a lot of this is due to the fact that, you know, when you're trying to get in and do detail, you, you kind of, you stab in like this and then the bristles get bent. Okay. And so it happens. It's what it, it is, what it is. And you just kind of have to deal with it when it comes and you just kind of do it. Here's another one where the tip is, it's not as frayed as before. It's still pretty good. I still use this in some miniatures, but it's starting to get to that frayed point where it won't hold its shape even when wet. Um, so what do I mean when I say when wet? Well, you're going to want to get yourself a cup. And I've used like an old child's sippy cup you can kind of see um the paint residue in it and i'm currently using this snoopy mug because i'm a huge peanuts fan and i love snoopy so um but i just kind of wanted to, to mention that you know you're gonna want to fill it you don't want to fill it too too much but you want to fill it with some water and you want to have it near um if you've listened to duncan Rhodes talk if you've listened to some of the citadel ones They'll talk about two thin coats. They'll talk about you know wetting down some of your um, some of your paints with water to get them to flow smooth. I find that I don't need it with a lot of these type of acrylics um, that you buy. Um, they're not they're kind of already pre watered down. They're not a super thick acrylic paint, um, and so you're gonna find that you really don't need to. Um, to uh, put them in any kind of uh, like a medium, like any kind of water or anything like that. Um, so 
the, the thing with the Citadel paints is, yes, Citadel paints are extremely thick, and you have to be very, very careful with them when you use them, especially their base paints and their layer paints. They're very, very thick, and so um, what I find is is that um, if, you, if you shake them up, and then you just touch the tip of them, and I'll, and I'll show this off when I get when I get into them. If you just um, if you just touch the tip, I'll I'll kind of open up this um, here. Hang on one second. Let me see if I can get this sucker open. <sighs> so Citadel paints have a little lid like this in them, um, and basically. Oh, come on now. There we go. Um, and basically what you're going to do is you're going to touch the brush to that lid, okay? Just on the very, very tip. And that's all you're going to use, okay? Um, and you'll find that if you do that and then you spread it around, the more that you spread it around with the brush, the easier it is to, um, to use when you do um, your your painting and stuff um you're gonna find that that things flow a lot smoother um one other thing that um i've used in a lot of my model building um and this is something that you don't necessarily have to use but this is testers um plastic cement um this is what you would typically use if you were going to buy like a model car and you wanted to paint it and put it, you know, glue it together and paint it. This is that stuff. I bought two of these with some applicators. Um, the applicators ended up proving completely worthless. I ended up throwing them out and just using the, the tip um, that that is under the cap. Um, this glue is very stringy, which means when you when you dab it to something and then you pull it away, it leaves like a little bit of a string on it. Um, so I haven't been using this as much. Um, I've mostly, um, I mostly use it to affix, um, certain things to bases. And even then sometimes it doesn't always work. And, um, I, I kind of don't, I, 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 I had a high opinion of this stuff, but I have had no end of trouble with it recently. So I don't recommend it. If you want it, go buy some. But as you can see, I'm almost out. And that's one of the reasons why I have the Mod Podge and the Citadel PVA glue is because this stuff is not working anymore. And um, once it's gone, it's gone from my paint station forever. But I have put together a lot of like um, these guys. Um, that, that guy right there with the hammer. And that guy right there with the with the relic, the Lord Relictor, both were put together using this, and they've held together for the most part. Um, actually, that that uh, that stormtrooper is there, but I have to be very careful with him because I had actually attached um, Luke Skywalker to a base similar to that, the, the square base, with this stuff, and he popped right off. Um, so you have to be careful, and like. Um, and I don't know if it's the bond between the um, metal and the plastic, but I've also had plastic miniatures. Um, in fact, I had a bunch of um, these guys that uh, you can, you can kind of see um, a, a little bit of the residue, but like I had attached some of these guys. Um, these are little 172nd scale miniatures um, that I was going to use for um, Tomorrow's War. And they were attached to bases, actually those bases right there, they're little resin bases, and with this stuff, and they just popped right off. So I decided to um, take those guys and I put them together with that Citadel PVA glue. And they seem to be holding right now. They, they actually seem to be holding much better than, than with this stuff. Um, so I don't recommend this. I know it's sitting on my station right now, but I, I don't necessarily recommend that you have that. Um, the last couple of things that you need. Okay. Um, these, these are cheap, inexpensive trays that I bought. And I think I got like five or six of them from Walmart for like 
two or three dollars. They're actually like, I think they're like Mickey or mini um, paint trays um, cause they're in the shape of a bow and all this kind of stuff. Um, but, and, and I mean, you can kind of see in like right over there, there's, you know, there's some more that I haven't used yet. Um, those are, those are not necessary, but they're actually kind of useful. Um, because you can kind of like, as you can see, I took like one of these and I just dripped it onto the tray and then I just kind of like set it in there and was like, you know, forget it. You know, here's some gold. Here's some, here's some of the, um, silver, you know, here's a green and a blue, um, like up here. So I, I had purchased, um, oh, damn it. His, yeah, uh, his hat fell off, but I had purchased Gandalf and, um, I wanted a, um, I wanted his cloak to be a very different gray to it. Um, and so what I did was, is, um, I put together, um, some, uh, um, some white and some gray and I mixed them together to make this un you can, you can kind of see it. It's, it's this part right here. Okay. So I put a little bit of white here and I put some of the gray here and then I mixed it together to make this sort of like a lightish gray. Okay. And I think it was that pewter gray that's in the back there from Apple Barrel is what I used. Um, this gray here is this top gray here and it's actually a much better gray. Um, so, and that's what I, I kind of put on his, um, on, on Gandalf. Oh, come on, come on right there was this top gray back here. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of however you want to do it. You just kind of have to make sure that you do it. But here again, <laughs> here's the, here's the top of his hat. Um, it, it just, yeah, it just fits on top of his head. And I have had the, again, this glue <laughs> is what I put it on there. And, and his hand <clears throat> is in there too with this stuff. And it doesn't really work. And again, it says cement for plastics, but it doesn't even stick to plastic. So I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I really wouldn't. And I mean, that's what I've actually used to affix him to the base and the horse stands fine. I had to, um, one of the things that you need to worry about with some of these metal miniatures, because this is a metal miniature, is um, <clears throat> when they're walking, you can kind of see that I have the horse um, stuck on this plastic base here, okay? Because he was so damn top heavy that when I stuck him up there, he would just fall over, okay? He was in danger of falling over. So I literally had to stick, and you can kind of see that there was another um, thing that I've been trying to stick here to stick under his thing. And that fell off. And that was a Citadel miniature <laughs> on a Citadel base. <clears throat> and that, pla and that cement, that tester cement wouldn't even stick. Are you flipping kidding me? Like seriously. Okay. So one of the last things that you're going to want to have is you are going to want to have a sharp exacto knife. Okay. Um, and these knives are, are very useful for a lot of reasons. Um, you can use them as mold scrapers, um, cause you can use kind of the backside of this as a mold scraper and you can even kind of use like towards the tip has a little bit of a bevel to it. So you can kind of use it that way as well. Um, and you can also, I mean, it's, it's just useful for cutting a lot of different things and, um, I have used it so many times. I love this knife. My precious. No, I'm joking. Um, these are, these are excellent, excellent tools to have around your hobby station. Um, I recommend that you get one with a cover. Okay. So that way, um, when you, you know, when you're not using it, you can keep it around and it's not going to damage, you're not going to damage your miniatures and, um, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to hurt yourself. Um, the last, <clears throat> one of the last tools I recommend is a file. 
Um, this one is kind of the same kind of exacto brand. Um, it is probably one of the most underrated tools in any arsenal when you're miniature painting or even model building is you're going to want to have a file. Okay. Um, I have used this so many times. You can kind of see the residue that's on this thing. I have used this thing so many times um, in the course of my work. I absolutely love it. The last thing that you're going to want to need, and these are a little bit too big for what I have. Um, I, I had a pair, um, but you're going to want a pair of snips. Okay. Um, like I said, these are too big. You want to get ones that are made for electricians. Okay. Um, the electricians, um, snips are going to be a hell of a lot smaller and they're going to allow you to get into the sprues and be able to, um, you know, lock in where you want them. Okay. So <clears throat> one of the things that I kind of wanted to show you was on the Sir Justin miniature here. Um, so you can kind of see that just off of his hand here, there's this little metal flashing. Okay. That's what they call that. They call that flashing. Um, there's also some down here kind of by his foot. Okay. Um, and also there's a ton on his base and they make it so that when he stands, you can kind of see that he doesn't want to stand correctly. He kind of wants to fall over. So you want to file that down, okay? And you want to make sure that all of that flashing is removed. And I believe... That, um, no, that's not flashing. That's just part of uh, his actual miniature. Um, another thing that you want to be careful of is like up here on his spear tip... Um, you can kind of see it's it's a little bit hard to see um but like the tip of his spear up here you want to make sure that that's smooth as well because once you put paint on that that's going to magnify um and it's going to look unnatural so you know take that file just kind of hit that a couple times and then you're probably going to need to straighten the tip just a tiny bit because you can kind of see that the tip is just a teensy weensy bit bent this is the nice thing about metal miniatures is that you can actually bend these a little bit and they you know they just bend as long as you don't bend them too much they they shouldn't have any problem um so yeah anywhere there's any kind of flashing um anything like that was which is left over from the actual pour okay um so when they pour this in when they pour the metal into the mold when they pour the pewter in and it sets some of this flashing just kind of sits in between the the um you know you can kind of see the mold line um, right next to uh, his fingers there. That's a mold line, but you won't see that. Um, once you get once you get into the painting, once you do all that stuff, nobody's gonna see that from a distance. They're gonna actually have to pick it up and like and like put it that close to them to be able to see the mold line. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a nice thing about um, metal miniatures is that their mold lines are very, very, very hard to spot. So you shouldn't need to do too much. Um, as for our dude here, Judas Bloodspire, um, he shouldn't need a whole lot. Um, come on. Come on. Focus. There you go. Um, so he actually isn't going to need a lot. He might need that one on his arm trimmed because um, there's like a little bit of a plastic flash right there. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much, I mean, he's really good. Like... They have gotten really good with their mold lines on their plastic miniatures. Um, with the Citadel miniatures, they recommend that you have a mold line remover because their mold lines show a lot. Now, one of the things that we're going to make sure that we do when we paint is we're not going to want to get paint in that hole right there because that hole is actually for the cloak. Okay, this is his cloak. So this this part right here on the top, okay, that part is not, you're not gonna paint that and you're not gonna paint that hole because that's where it goes. Okay, so that his cloak billows out behind him. And the reason why we have them separate is so that we can paint the two of them together. We can paint the two of them and we can get detail on this cloak that we wouldn't be able to get. And we can get detail on his back that we wouldn't be able to get, okay? And so we're gonna paint these separately and then we're gonna join them together, okay? So <clears throat> I just kind of wanted to 
um, demonstrate some of the techniques that you're going to use. Now, I'm going to hope this works because this has been kind of a, a point of contention between me and the phone today. So let me see if I can actually put him in there. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Can you stay? Can you stay? Are you going to stay? Or are you going to fall? Come on. Just see you do it. All right, like that. Okay. So. I'm going to have to... I'm going to tip... Tip them up just a tiny bit like that. And I think that'll work. Stay. Stay. All right. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to take our clips and we're going to clip that little piece of flashing off. And as you can see, there's the flashing. Okay. Um, I know it doesn't, you know, because I'd have to focus it a lot, but that's basically it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our file and we're going to file down the base. And as you can see, it's already, I mean, you can already see that it is much, much flatter. And it doesn't take much to be able to do that. So let me bring it up here you can already see that it is much, much easier. And he now stands without wanting to tip. That's what you want, okay? Um, and I'm going to kind of file down where that flash line was, okay? I don't want to lose that detail, but I do want to kind of clean that up just a tiny bit. Um, if I had a much smaller... Um, uh, set of snips, I'd probably have a much easier time with that. Um, and then I think I want to do yeah, right up in there. I want to kind of get right in there. There we go. Just right there on the base, just to kind of get it so that it's not so sharp that it will hurt. So, and that should be it. Um, just. Just kind of get this one last time. Just want to make sure I'm getting some of that out of the way. Now, if we were affixing this to a base, then we would want to um, we would want to have a lot of these grooves on the bottom so that it would give the the, um, the glue something to hold to. Okay, so you would actually do this in in certain ways to kind of rough up the surface so that you could do that. So you can kind of see all these nice little grooves you would make sure that you have grooves on every surface to give that something to hold on to, okay? So there's that. And then um, with Judas here, I um, don't know that my snips are going to be able to do that. I might be able to use... Because that is just a bit of flashing. That's all that is. Yep, got it. That's it, just a little tiny piece of plastic. But that little tiny piece of plastic can make all the difference in the world when you are um, when you are doing something um, like model making, like you know that kind of stuff. Those little tiny details tend to stand out once you put paint on them. Um, let me set Gandalf out of the way here. And so, what I'm going to do here, really quick is I'm going to go ahead and put on the base coat for these guys, and then I'm probably going to call in an episode. I'm going to get these uploaded, and then um, I'll come in and I'll kind of show you, like, you know, how we're going to paint these things. So I'm going to put these brushes away. I'm going to get my beautiful, beautiful brush. And we always give our paints a good shake. Okay? Now, if you're going to use an airbrush, I don't have an airbrush, but if you're going to use an airbrush, okay, um, the biggest thing that you are going to want to do um, is get airbrush thinners. Because if you try to um, just dip or just put 
regular acrylic paint into an airbrush hopper and then try to use it, it won't work. It'll clog it up, okay? You have to use some airbrush thinners and you put just a tiny bit of paint and then you put a bunch of thinners in there and then it makes it all nice and thin, okay? Um, I've never actually used an airbrush. That's just a tip that I've heard from other people who have done the airbrushing. Um, so we are going to dab our brush in water and then we are going to get as much water off this brush as we possibly can. You're always going to want to have a rag handy. I always just kind of run that on my pants just like that. Just kind of gets all of that paint off of there. Now, when we, when we paint, okay, we're going to take a little bit of this acrylic and then we're just going to kind of spread, okay? Um, and at this stage, you want it to cover everything, okay? You don't want any bits showing. Now, there might be a tiny bit of the gray that shows through. That's okay, um, because if you're going to use a certain type of color on this, oops, and I kind of colored that, which I didn't mean to do, but that's okay. Um, it happens. It's not that big of a deal if you do paint an area that you're not supposed to. It's not the end of the world. I'm just saying that the paint can kind of make it so that the glue doesn't stick that well. Okay, so we are going to just cover this, okay? We want, we want this to be completely black, okay? Um, because one of the things that I learned when I first painted uh, a miniature was if you do it in the black, then areas like the chainmail on this guy, shadows of his cloak underneath, will be dark artificially because you're putting that on there, okay? Now you can see that with this brush... I have gotten into the recesses, okay? And I'm getting into all of those little recesses on the dragon, on the helmet. This is why you want that stiff brush. Now you can kind of see that my paint's a little bit thin here compared to here, and that's okay. It's not a big deal because, you know, this is just the base coat, but you can kind of see that my paint's getting a little thin. So we go back in, grab a little bit more, and then we continue painting, okay? And then what we do is, is if it looks like the paint doesn't want to stick too well, okay, then what you do is, is you wait and um, see that the uh, paint dries a tiny bit, okay? And then you go back and you put a second coat on, which you can do with a base coat. It's not that big of a deal. But again, it's just a base coat. This actually just, this base coat just actually gives the paint something to stick to other than the metal, okay, of the miniature, or the plastic of the miniature, depending on which one you're painting. Um, but you want to make sure that you turn it to all different sides, and you want to make sure that you really get in there. See how I'm stabbing? Okay, you want to make sure that you're getting the paint in there, okay? You don't want that metal showing through because it will be glaring when you get done. Like, you will see it. Um... And you'll kind of go, wow, that's um, that's pretty crazy. Um, so we're just going to kind of paint. And what I like to do is, and you can kind of see your, your, your fingers are going to get dirty. Um, but it's just acrylic paint. washes off in the sink. It's water-based, so it's not that bad. Um, so basically, you just want to try to get as much of the miniature covered as possible. Okay? Um, on the first pass. Okay? Because you're going to be holding on to the miniature at some point. Now, um, I've never used them, but if you have one of those um, little things that you um, that you can put um, onto, like the miniature onto to paint it, um, those help tremendously as they um, as they have a much better. Um, uh, part, or they have a much better um, way of not not having um, a lot of that right there for you. Um, now, as you can see, I'm being extremely careful with this miniature. 
Um, this is this is the bones. This is the plastic miniature. I'm being very careful with it because I don't want to damage it. Okay, and um, you you can be hard and stabby with the um, with the metal one, but with the plastic one, we're gonna kind of we're gonna kind of keep it nice and nice and and light. We we still want to stab, but we're not gonna be as forceful. Okay. Um, we we want to make sure that we cover but not destroy okay cuz you can you can break a miniature very very easily if you're not careful i did that with um king lu and lian core from bretonia um i had um i was trying to get him to uh to go together and um his sword broke off he was a resin miniature. His sword broke off, and then his um, uh, and his thing kind of, and and then his arm broke, and I just did. I I had it at that point. I said, "Screw it." <laughs> it's like forget this. I'm done with this miniature because I I was I was tired of trying to put him back together. Um. You know, it was all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put poor King Lou and Lee and Cor back together again. Um, and so, when I get down to the base, I can be a little bit more stabby to try to get all the skulls that are on his base. Um, but yeah, this is basically just, you're just trying to get the best of it done, okay? The, the, the most you can get covered, okay? And you're probably going to notice the first few times you do it, you're going to notice that there's some things that happen. Um, there's some parts of the miniature that you don't quite get all the time. And, you know, you're going to you're gonna go, argh! All you have to do is just grab a bit of black and just fill it in, okay? Because um, we're going to be grabbing onto the bases a lot while we're painting the tops of these miniatures. And so we're gonna want to make sure that we have, um, we're, we're gonna want to make sure that that we go back and clean up the bases before we paint. Um, so now that the cloak is mostly done, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of of uh, the stuff in there. If you want, you just spread it back out like that. Bam, done. Um, I'll probably end up putting a little bit more. Um, black on there because once I get done painting the cloak, I'm probably going to be able to go back to Sir Justin. But this is what we do, okay? We're just covering this stuff in the black because we want that black to have, we want that black to cover everything, okay? We want it to just get in all the different holes and cracks and crevices because we want that, um, we want that shadow in there, okay? When we go to paint this, with the different colors, we're going to want those colors to stand out, okay? And so, um, looks like, let me, uh, let me see here, where am I at on time? Ugh. Okay, so, let me just dump a little bit more black, another drop, there we go. And then, we might need to sometimes when you look at a miniature from the top, you can notice some different things that you have going for it. So I'm just going to bring this over and I'm just going to kind of cover the, the bottom end of this very quickly because I want to get done and, and uh, I'm going to try to get these two uploaded, and then after that, I'll see about um, getting getting the next ones. Um, but as of filming this, I had just uploaded my um, my unboxing video um, to uh, um, uh, to YouTube for the brand new HasLab HeroQuest. Um, and I gotta say, I am very impressed with it. Um, and so, um, go over and check that out if you're curious at all about things. Um, 
you know, if you're if you're curious at all about the the new um, Hero Quest, you can you can check that out on my channel, and you can kind of see that. You can kind of see that I uh, freaking help. All right, um, let me get him off to the side. I'm just gonna try to get the rest of him <laughs> race coated here. All right, um, come on, Judas, work with me, buddy. All right. So you're going to find that, yeah, as you hold the miniature, as you move the miniature around, um, you're probably going to end up taking off some of the, um, some of the stuff. But the biggest thing that you want to do is try to get in all the cracks. You want to get in there and try to get as much of it as possible. Um, because the more that you get easier it will be in the long run to get all of that detail when when it comes time to actually paint the miniature um so i'm trying to get yeah back way in the back i don't know if you can kind of see that but there were some gray areas here and there and sometimes it's going to be places that you're just never going to be able to get a brush into um and that's okay. You can leave those areas and say, forget it. You know what I mean? Um, so, um, anyway, this is, this is how I start my painting. Okay. I base coat the miniature. I make sure that I have everything that should be black, black. Okay. And the biggest part is what you want to do is you want to make sure that you just get down in all the nooks and crannies, okay? And if in the course of turning the miniatures around and moving the miniatures around, um, you end up, uh, you know, um, hitting the, you know, you end up taking some of the paint off, it's very simple, go back, grab that, put it back on, slather it back in there, okay? Um, 